but last week was like July 1 and it snuck up on us. So we didn't have enough time to get all the stuff together. We were quite busy, especially for summertime. So I uh, rescheduled it for tonight. So if you're catching us live today on July 8th, 2022, welcome. All right, let's make sure the technology and all is working. If you can see me and hear me just fine, let me know where you're tuning in from in the chat box below. I have a bunch of friends on here already. Hey, Janet, tuning in from San Diego. We got Monique in the house from Maryland, Terry from New Hampshire. Awesome. Yay. So I'm coming to y'all live from my home sewing studio. Well, I should just call it a crafting studio now. I do mostly sewing, but I do all the stuff as we're here to talk about fiber related crafts, crochet, knitting, spinning, all the goodies. So that's what we'll be covering today. But this is my home sewing studio and we live here in North Central Florida where it is fixing a storm again because it's summer here and it's hurricane season. All right. Great. So everybody can see me. Oh, <laughs> Jamie says, hey, from Austin, Texas, where it's a million degrees outside. Sounds about right. Am I lagging? Am I frozen? Okay, great. So we're good. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanted to show you and talk about is uh, my crochet market tote course. Several of you signed up for it. We've already had the little live chat that we had with it. All the videos are now posted, but the course is still obviously open and available for anybody else who wants to sign up. So you may recall from a previous episode of Fiber Friday where I showed y'all this one sample. Well, now I have the other sample to show you. You can go ahead. Oh, I'm here showing this and this camera's not even on. I forgot to tell you. Okay, now we're good. So this is a sample of my crocheted market tote. It is a Crafty Gemini exclusive pattern. This is um, not available anywhere else because me and my team designed it. So that was the one sample. And then I wanted to show you all the one that I think I maybe have shown some little teasers to it, like as I was working on it, because this is the one that I was making as I filmed the 21 video lessons that go along with this course. So if you think you want to try it, but you're not sure if you'll be able to follow along, I do share a lot of tips and tricks for beginners. And then as several of you all who signed up for the course already know, if you lose your count or you're just not used to counting stitches, you'll just, just rip it out and start again. That's a cool thing with crochet that you literally can just rip it back. But I have been putting the other partially made versions of this bag inside of this one with the pattern and all. And so the course does include a six page PDF pattern that has images. We even include little check off boxes so that you can keep track of your rounds when you get to the steps where we're like making the exact same or doing the exact same stitch and section over and over again. And so that's that. Let me pull this stuff out. I also, this is why I have this in here, is that I wanted to show you that after the bag was complete, I still had this much yarn left in my Karen Cotton Cakes yarn. So that is this one. And this one looks a little bit different, right? That blue looks darker than the blue on this, even though it's the same colorway. So this one looks a little bit weird. I think this is why I plucked it out of the stash. But we do have some of these still left in stock in our online shop that you can order. One of these cakes is more than you need to create my crocheted market tote, as you can see. All right. So, uh, and assuming that you have similar gauge, but you can see that even if you make yours significantly bigger or smaller, you're going to have even more. So there's plenty of yarn, okay, to um, make one of these bags out of the Karen cotton cakes. Now, I think they carry, I think the only people that sell these now, like the only vendor for this version of the Yarnspirations Karen cotton cakes is Michael's. So if you're looking for different colorways, and we, I think we're already out of stock of, of a couple different colorways, but you can check out the link in the description box below. We'll put the link in the chat too. If we don't have a colorway that you need or that you like, then you know you can check, look around for it either online or at Michael's Craft Stores if you have that near you, okay? So I did wanna show that so people don't freak out and think, oh, do I need two? Nope, just one, there's still plenty. And of course the pattern instructions tell you um, to use like a cotton blend worsted weight yarn. So we're looking for something that's labeled number four back here to follow along um, with the video lessons. But I think this one turned out super duper cute. Look at that. And it's a self-striping yarn. So this just, I didn't, sometimes people see these types of projects and they'll ask me like, how did you know when and where to change color, you know, as you were working on it? And I don't, you just keep working with the same strand of yarn. You can see this is all part of the same cake and it, it changes color. It's going to go from this plum color to the yellow to this one, just in the same order as you see it here too. So they're super fun. And as you're working on them, they're even more fun. 
if you knit or crochet with striped yarn or variegated yarns, you know how fun it is. Like, you know, doing the same stitch over and over again can be pretty boring sometimes, pretty monotonous, especially if it's like a super simple pattern. But then when you get that little pop of the next color, you're like, oh, I like that. Blue, aqua, or whatever, you know, is popping up. At least that's how I feel when I work with yarn. So we're going to put a link in the description box and in the chat box below for my crochet market tote bag. Several of you have asked if we were going to release the pattern individually without the video course, because maybe you're already an advanced crocheter and you're interested in that. And that is something that we're considering, but right now the only way to get it is with the whole course bundle. Okay. With the digital course and the PDF pattern, but I am loving this. I call it a crochet market tote. So I think for me, the way that I came up with the design and stuff is so that it's um, perfect for like going to the farmer's market or going to a summer market where you can, you know, throw a bunch of stuff in here and go about your business. Okay. So that is that. You can see this one. This is one of the yarns that we were carrying in the shop. These um, by Euro Yarn Baby, I think is the brand Babe Soft Cotton Worsted. So we do carry this in the shop as well. And in only like three colors. This pale lavender, which obviously, here's the beginnings of another crocheted market tote bag. And then I think in like a really pale minty color too. So we still have some of these. And then this one also. I need to grab another ball. Um, because these balls don't quite have as much yarn as the cotton cakes, uh, you need two of these. So if you are ordering yarn for this mar uh, crochet market tote uh, video course, make sure that you buy two because that's what you'll need to make it. You can see how far up I got with one and then I need to introduce another ball of yarn so I can keep going and have another cute red and pink one for myself too. So yeah, they make great gifts, I think. And it's a super cute and handy bag to have. All right. So let's bundle that up and toss it to the side. Oh, Patty says that she's almost done with uh, done with tote number three. She's already made two of them. She says, all that is left is the handle. She's so excited. I am so glad, Patty. Make sure that you post a picture in our Facebook group. You made super cute ones, the first two that you made. She's cranking them out. When we were on the live, I was like, you probably have the pattern already memorized, right, Patty? She said, almost. <laughs> all right, let's see what else. Making sure I don't have any questions here that I'm missing. But yeah, if you are in that class, go ahead and let me know below if you are making progress. Have you had to rip out a bunch of times because you keep losing count? There are some tips and tricks in the video course where I tell you like what to look for because sometimes it's easy to miss one stitch in a, in a kind of a tricky spot to see. So make sure that if you are in the course already and you're having trouble and you always find like if you go back and count the rounds or count the stitches in your rounds, if you're off by one, Make sure that you're watching the videos so that you can pick up on the tip that I give there to make sure that you, you know, because you might have the right number of stitches. You're just missing one when you count it. Okay. Next. That was crochet. Let's talk knitting next. Why not? So last time we were on in June, can you go ahead and put up that picture on the side of the screen that I am on? Of the, when I cranked up this tube, if you recall, at the beginning of June, I went on, <laughs> oh, it's too big, huh? That's okay. They can kind of see it there. So, um, at the beginning of June, I went on a circular sock machine cranking retreat. That's what the machine looks like. Y'all have seen it before. If, if you've been on here, cause we've posted pictures and little video clips and stuff before, but, um, I, I purchased this yarn. This was like a special colorway just for the retreat. It was called hot socks colorway from one of the vendors that was there. And I got the skein. She wound it up into the cone for me because the vendor was there selling it. And I cranked out an entire tube. So this was done like this. I think I did them like that. And the green was not on there. You just crank, 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 and keep cranking. And it just makes a whole tube, right? I had done hung hems here, which is a technique where you kind of fold over and pick up stitches so that you don't have a raw edge. It's just like a hem that you would sew on any stretch knit garment. Okay. So I did the hung hem there, hung hem there. I did my math and calculated, you know, how many rows before I hung the hem, then the length of the, the leg portion of the sock that I wanted. And then I left out the heel and added the number that I normally on my machine crank out for the foot length because we had um, Miss Mary there who was teaching us how to do afterthought heels and toes. And although yes, plenty of us crank out the full sock on the circular sock knitting machine, I also wanted to learn how to do this technique of afterthought stuff. A lot of people think like, just cause you have a circular sock machine, like why would you ever hand knit socks? 
because I can't take the sock machine with me on road trips, like in the car. It's not as portable as just, you know, a pair of circular knitting needles, right, to knit um, the socks with. So I'm super excited to be kind of expanding my skill set to different techniques, different types of toes, different types of heels, different shapes, and, and using different yarns for the socks. So I think last time in June I had showed y'all, because at the retreat, I'm pretty sure I had done like almost the whole toe, and maybe in June I think I should there. You, look at you, technology master. So that's what it looked like on the machine. And the bright green yarn that you see inside, like if you're looking down the tunnel of the sock, is actually waste yarn. Because you have to put on waste yarn, then put your real yarn, you know, your actual sock yarn on, crank, and then you separate it. The, the waste yarn is basically just a way to hold your live stitches so it doesn't unravel while you continue to work on your sock project, okay? And then that lime green that you see that's next to the cone of the hot pink is this one. And this is another colorway that she was selling, the same lady that was vending there and selling this um, dyed yarn that she had for us. I purchased this because I wanted something that would really pop. And so that's what I have there on that cone. So that's what I'm doing the toes and the heels with. So in June, I'm pretty sure I had the toe done and I just needed to Kitchener off, um, which is basically like to close up and graft the toe area here to make it like a proper close up toe. And look how cute. So now, well then after that recently, I think in the last couple weeks and this weekend I finished the Kitchenering here, I went ahead and did the same thing and added the toe to this one. So both of these are one step closer to being finished. Now I need to go in and figure out which side I want to be the top of the sock, right? Facing up and up and then figure out which, you know, which I want on the bottom. Not that it really matters on this because they both look pretty decent. This one looks a little neater up top, so I might do that as the top. And that means that then I'll come in here, I will count my row or my rounds of, you know, remember how I said on the machine I, I cranked, because my the machine has a row counter on it, and so I cranked the number that I wanted for the leg and the number for the feet, or for the foot portion of the sock. So in between there, I'm going to count so I can find the point of where I need to insert my heel. And then I'm going to work an afterthought heel. And an afterthought heel is just a heel that you put in after. <laughs> the tube of the sock is done. So that is my plan, to come in here with the same green and um, put in afterthought heel. So hopefully when I meet y'all here in August for the next Fiber Friday, I may have that done. Who knows? So that's the plan for that. Then, as I was looking for little project bags in my stash to take my different little sock projects on, I found this super cute one. And you know, I cannot even remember where I got this. I'm not sure if it came in like a subscription box for my yarny stuff that, that I um, order sometimes. <laughs> but it says, Llama Stay Home and Knit. Like, I'm a stay home and knit. How cute is that? And it is by So Crazy Crafter like so as in sewing, so crazy crafter. And I'm pretty sure this came, I don't know if it was in a yarn yay box. I think it was. But isn't that super cute? And it's like a canvassy material here. And then it's just drawstring. And it's a perfect size pouch for socks. I just thought I would share that because that is super cute. It has, um, the design is machine embroidered. <laughs> With like a metallic thread, it looks super duper cute. Okay. So that was that little project bag, and I think I had this in here. Then I went ahead and found in another um, project bag a pair of socks that, oh my word, I think I started these 2019. <laughs> Embarrassing to say. But I think I started these in 2019, and these I did toe up. I'm pretty sure these was the first pair of toe up socks that I made. Isn't that cute? And the yarn, again, it's self-striping. Like, it goes like that. I, I can't remember. It was like a Regia yarn, I think. And it's designed to, like, where you start, it's going to match identical. Do you see how that matches? Like, even the patterned area with the stripes is the same all the way up. Pretty impressive, except here. It changed up a little bit at the top there. I feel like this gray has more than this one does. Oh, no, it does. I lined it up again, and look, it's right. That's pretty impressive. I'm always so impressed how companies and even independent dyers are able to <laughs> dye their yarn so that the, you get a pair, a perfectly matching pair of socks, which some people are really, really sticklers for that. Like they have to have their socks match. I don't really care too much, but I thought it was pretty cool that it did 
you know? So what you see here is the waist yarn. And these are kind of at the same step as these. Just a different gauge, different. And these were done on, ooh, I think I used like US size one or something, 2.2 2 millimeter, 2.25 or something like that. And you can see how this one has a more rounded toe, which I like. Now that I've made several different pairs of socks, I tend to find that this fits me better then this kind of, it just, the increases, it's like a little too pointy for my liking. But, you know, there are different styles and there's so many different types of toes and heels that you can make on socks and stuff. But let me see something. Oh, they're almost about the same width. So these are going to fit me just a little bit tighter. And so what I need to do is go in here and these are going to have a heel where this blue yarn is. And so this technically, I guess you wouldn't call it an afterthought heel, even though you're coming in after the sock is mostly done to put in the heel. Because if you put in waste yarn, they say it's like you planned it, so it's a forethought heel or something. You know, all this, all these um, terminology stuff. And you know, my chat disappeared on me, so give me a second and let me see if I can get it to pop back up. It just was like lagging and loading. Okay, it looks like it's up, so I'll wait to see if I see anybody say something. You want to chat in the box just to make sure I can see it. So I need to go ahead now and add heels to these socks and then I'll have another pair of socks. Cool, right? So you can see that the ribbing here is cinched up a lot more because this was done by hand, proper ribbing. I'm not yet very well acquainted with the ribber on my circular sock machine. And for anybody that's wondering, I have an Erlbacher Gearhart Speedster <laughs> machine. Great. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for tuning in from Vancouver Island. Um, and so this I haven't yet done ribbing on the tubes and the socks that I crank out on the machine because the ribber is kind of like a whole nother world. All right, so those were that. And then, as you can see, I've been bit by the sock knitting bug. So I just wanted to tease to this because in the fall, a lot of you have asked for sock knit-alongs. So I have been working on a simple, what, we'd, what we would call a vanilla sock pattern with worsted weight yarn, which is thicker, obviously, than <laughs> the super thin fingering weight yarn, which also means that you'll be able to make a sock quicker. And so that is my goal with this pattern that we're gonna release in the fall. I'm still you know, making tweaks to it. This was just one sample that I worked up to make sure that everything worked. I wear a US woman's size 11 shoe, okay? And this was a size large and the pattern as we're working on it now, it goes even up to an XL. So you'll be able to make them for guys too. So that'll be awesome for big feet. So this yarn, isn't it cute? I got this yarn. I want to say a couple of years ago from my friend, Alex creates, that's his username on, um, on Instagram. And look how pretty it's just hundred percent super wash wool, which is not, I mean, it works, but I don't think it's super ideal for hard wearing socks. These are thick socks because they're worsted weight. So I'm not going to be like wearing shoes with these socks. This is just like sit on the couch, in bed, reading a book, watching a movie, cozy, you know, winter socks. So these are thicker. They have a ribbed cuff here. And I, I made this sock in like a day, right? Like four hours or something. It doesn't take long because it's like the yarn is thicker. You're using larger needles and you're just cranking right through. And a lot of it is just plain stockinette. Now, the heel on this, right now it's set where the design is a forethought heel, I guess. But it's done after. So we knit top down, finish off at the toe, and then we come back in here and insert the heel. Which I have found that, that it sounds like it's going to be more complicated or more advanced. But I think that's the easiest way to teach beginners right now. I'll share with you something in a minute that might have me changing my mind by the time we um, get to this knit along and we, you know, put all the final, the final details together for it. <laughs> April says, no knitting or crochet police here. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, Mary Grace says, yes, a knit along would be great, please. Kathy says, me too, a size 11. I know it's so hard because when you look at these patterns, they'll, they'll tell you like the gauge and the needles and the yarn and they'll be like, out of one 50 gram ball, I was able to make a pair of socks or something. And it's like a woman size six or seven. I'm like six or seven. I think I wore a size six or seven in like the third grade. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to change this quite a bit. So I was glad that, you know, this worked. Okay. Um, Gail is asking two needle only. So it's actually, I don't do DPNs. Those are double pointed needles. I use, 
a mess. But I use um, Magic Loop or nine inch circulars. Because this is worsted weight yarn, I think I'm using US size eight needles, which are five millimeters. And so I didn't have short one, like a, a nine or 10 inch um, circular in that large of a size. I have my little circulars for like proper sock weight yarn, like fingering weight yarn. These guys I have in like US 2, 2.25, 2.5, 2.75, but not in this range of a size eight. So I just use like a 40 inch circular needle uh, to do magic loop. So that's how I, I started the second one here. But yeah, we're doing them circulars or I guess you could do them DPNs. For me, the DPNs or double pointed needles don't work because you don't have a cord here where things can slide onto and still stay. I drop stitches left and right. And then I get so mad that I just want to throw the project away. So either two, I've done socks with two circular needles, like two long circular needles. That works because you have extra length that if they slide, they're not just going to drop completely. You know, they're still hanging on in a cord somewhere. So those work, um, or magic loop. Yeah. All right. Oh, hi, Demps Designs. Welcome. My first Fiber Friday. Welcome, welcome. Gail says, it sounds awesome. Great. Yes. Yvonne says, I would love to learn to knit. Yeah. So that would be... What's coming down the pipeline next for knitting projects? And again, it's worsted weight. Yes, these are not going to be socks that you're just going to wear with your sneakers, <laughs> you know, but it's a way for you to understand the composition, I feel like, and like the mechanics of everything, how it comes together, where you make the changes, how we measure certain things to get the full length that we need. And then remember that it doesn't have to be super duper perfect because again, the yarn stretches. So if you're off by even half of an inch, I would say even three quarters of an inch or so, the yarn can stretch. You know, it's not like the sock is going to be suffocating your feet either. Um, so yeah. Okay, so that is what's coming up next in the fall. Look for that. Okay, we just finished the crochet market tote course, which was this one for those of you that are just tuning in. This is um, a Crafty Gemini exclusive pattern and online video course with a six page PDF pattern and 21 video lessons. And you can sign up for that using the link in the chat or in the video description box below. And you know, we're trying to alternate like one crochet along, one knit along, one crochet along. So we did a knit along in the winter. And this we just did now. So the next thing up is going to be a knit project, but it's not going to be this one yet. We're going to do that knit shawl. I think I showed it maybe in the first couple episodes of Fiber Friday. Oh, I'll show it. I have it right here, actually. One of them. This is just one of the samples. I don't think this one's been blocked. I can't remember. This was maybe the second one. But this is, again, another pattern that I designed. It's a little simple shawl. Um, I dyed this yarn. Isn't it pretty? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I amaze myself sometimes. Um, yeah, it's super cute. It has like pinks, blues, reds, whites, and then of course the different shades of purples wherever the reds and the pinks and blues hit. Super cute. So we have had this pattern fully tested. I have a lot of pictures from different testers that have tried this pattern out. And so this is probably going to be the next one. We're going to knit with this. It is fingering weight yarn, so it is thin, but we're using a slightly larger needle, so it does it whips up pretty quickly. And it's a pretty beginner friendly pattern. Even though when I was first starting to knit, if I would have seen this, I would have been like, no, that's not beginner friendly, but it is. Trust me. I designed it just for y'all <laughs> for the beginners or for those of you that are more experienced and just want to make a cute little lightweight shawl. Okay. Obviously if you live in Canada, this ain't going to be your go-to, but I live in Florida. So, you know, this works. Okay. Um, great. So this is going to be the next one. So we're going to have another knit along. So remember, if you're not yet on our email list for our fiber related stuff, uh, you definitely want to sign up for that. And the link is in the video description if you're watching us on YouTube. Okay. Oh, thank you, Belinda. She says it's super cute. Becky says I'm, my feet have claustrophobia. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. She says she's always barefoot. So am I. But. There are those days where you're just like extra chilly. And when I put this on, I was like, oh my gosh, I could totally see myself having multiple pairs of worsted weight socks. At first you'd be like, why would you make worsted weight socks? But you know what, how it is. When you're a teacher, you, you want to teach the techniques, but something like this is a lot for a beginner to start off with. You'll start and you'll be like, I am not making any progress. This is taking forever. I hate socks and toss it. <laughs> So my job as a teacher is to get you to work through the different components, the different steps of making the sock. And once you do it in a thicker yarn, absolutely go down to a thinner, go down to a thinner, you know, and then make real actual socks that can fit in your shoes and won't be super bulky. Okay. 
All right, so we went ahead and put the link there in Facebook for y'all if you want to sign up for the Fiber Friday newsletter, which is all our crafts-related stuff. Okay, let me see what else I have here. Boom, 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 boom. And I have, ooh, a couple more things. So next up, isn't that cute? Okay, let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. Um, This, this, this. Okay, next up, let's do a little bit of spinning. I haven't been spinning too much, but I'm trying to get back into it again. I had a friend, a Julie. Hey, Julie, if you're watching, who recently gifted me, I think like five full raw fleeces still in the grease. And to my friend, Vicky. Hi, Vicky, if you're watching, I'm going to ship you all these fleeces to process. My friend Vicky has a, she calls it a mini mill. She's the one that processed our fleeces from our Florida cracker sheep that we had sheared in January. I took a little chunk, if you recall, and I processed it myself and scoured it and did all that and ran it through my drum carter. And so this is actually a blend. The, wherever you see like a white fiber here, that's from my sheep. So then I went ahead and mixed in some extra stuff. There's like some Angelina fibers in there for a little bit of like blue sparkle. Then these other light blues are like blends of merino and bamboo and whatever else. And so I just ran them through my drum carter a bunch. And ta-da! Let me get y'all a little close-up of this. You can see the sparkle. So this is what I've been spinning with my homegrown wool. Isn't that super cool? I think it's super fun. Of course, it makes it real, you know, it's it, it's not that it's difficult to um, spin. I haven't had trouble because I think I have another bobbin that I spun also with our homegrown wool. And um, with the other blends, like the softer blends in there and everything, it really softens up the the yarn. And look how thin I'm able to, um, to spin it. I, like I look at this and I'm like, girl, I cannot believe you did that. When I first started, it was like chunks going through and you couldn't make it come uh, like thinner. You know, the goal was supposedly like to go thinner, go thinner. And we were talking about this at the retreat in June that now we spin thin and it's hard to go back and spin thick. It's like I can't go backwards. I really have to like focus and think like, oh, let a whole chunk go now. It's so funny how, how. You know, things change and your muscle memory changes as you work on something and practice it in one specific way. But look at the sparkles. I don't know what I'm going to apply this with yet. And not all of it is blue. I don't know if you can see in there, but there's some pink. And it's other chunks of my mixed and blended homegrown wool with other stuff. And I've just been spinning. So this one all has, even though it's different colors in here, it does have um, our wool like our homegrown wool in there with other things blended in. So I just wanted to show you the little chunk, the bat that I had done up with that. So I'm going to finish spinning this onto this bobbin and then I'll figure out what I'll do with it. If I'm going to apply it to something different or just apply it back onto itself. Oh, April's asking, how did you get the sparkle? The sparkle April I got from, let me see if I can grab some real quick. Cause they're on the other side of this. They're fibers that are little sparkle fibers. And I have a little baggie right here. These are not the colors that I use, but I just grabbed the first two that I could grab from my massive stash of spinning goodies. Ta-da! So this is Angelina. Let me focus this here for y'all. So they're super thin, and a little goes a long way. You don't need to put that much, but look at that. It's funny because when you first see this stuff, you're like, ugh, kind of tacky. Like, who's going to throw that in there? And I promise you, as soon as you sprinkle a little, you're like, ooh, it's like a little, just the way that the light reflects off of it and pops. Now it's like I want to put it in everything. When my daughter was working on the different Rolex that she was doing um, with the different fiber blends, I mean, she would go overboard. Who's going to tell a kid to not put sparkle on something, you know? Look at that. So a little bit, like you just, and I'll probably do a little, we should do a little demo like that on the drum carter for a future Fiber Friday, just so you can see kind of how I do it. Not that I'm a professional, but I like these types of crafts, you know, where you just like, eh, look, it's like cooking. That's how I cook. A little of this, a little of that. What else do I have in here? Throw it in there. So making your own bats, fiber bats like this for spinning. I love doing that. So yeah, that's what they're called. Angelina. This is blue magic Angelina, even though it's white, but it has like a blue tinge to it. And this one is silver iris Angelina. And these, it looks like I ordered from thewoolery.com. So that's that. But that's how you get the sparkle. A little bitty bit and boom. All right. 
Becky says, maybe I could wear sparkly socks. Let me tell you, Becky, that I actually have yarn, I think a couple of skeins that I need to dye up, and they have Angelina fibers in them. It's sock weight yarn with wool and nylon, and they sparkle. I want to see how it dyes up and then make them. <laughs> Belinda says, that's so cool. I've never seen yarn before, before it's yarn. Oh, yeah. If you've seen a sheep, you've seen yarn before it's yarn, Belinda. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, Heather, you're still in England. Oh my gosh. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Oh, and April's asking, do I sell them? I don't sell them. I just, you know, I'm still learning and kind of getting into the things and building up the stash of tools and supplies and learning how to use the stuff. I've been doing it for like, not even a year, maybe like eight months or something like that. Okay. So yeah, I, you see, oh good. You got, you, y'all were be able to see the sparkle. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that was that little bit of spinning. I did I have another bobbin up here? I thought maybe I did. Maybe I didn't because I haven't been spinning that much. But the only other thing I have is ta -da, this book. Now that I'm like in full sock knitting mode, whether it's by hand or on my circular sock machine, it's funny because I have had this book for a bit because in every class that I've taken with like Vogue Knitting Live, and if y'all haven't don't know what that is, check it out. I think they're going back to live in person, Vogue Knitting Live in New York City. But throughout the past couple of years, they've been doing like the online sessions. And I think we were doing them like every month already. So every month they'd come out with a new schedule. I looked to see what classes were interesting to me, what I want to do. And I would sign up for these classes. And just about every instructor that I took some type of sock knitting class from mentioned this book, Sock Architecture. And it's by Lara Neal. We have the, um, I put actually my Amazon affiliate link to this book is where I got it off of Amazon. It's in the video description box on YouTube. And, um, yeah, so that's where I got the book. Anyways, the book is called Sock Architecture and it says heels, toes, and techniques for knitting awesome socks. Right here in this little bubble, it says choose from 17 sock patterns or design your own. Yeah. So I have this tabbed here because I was looking to see what types of afterthought heels th were in this book. So that's why earlier when I was talking about doing this um, worsted weight sock knit along for the fall, I'm going to be looking, I might change this afterthought or forethought heel to something else if I find something that I feel like can more easily be taught, even though, like I said, this is so far the easiest one, I think. But I have this tabbed here because... There's a whole section on afterthought heels without gussets. So they have images here. I mean, of like every step of the way, how it looks. And they're working them with DPNs, like the double pointed needles. But I, I'm going to really sit down and um, kind of research these heels to see. There's toe up socks. There's, I mean, there's lacy designs. There's basic stuff, different shapes for like rounded feet or deeper instep or, you know, wider toe area or narrower or whatever. So you can really start making custom socks and come up with your own recipe or design to fit, you know, the, the unique feet of the people in your home. So here's like all the patterns and they show you the, the, the made sock so that you can get an idea, right? And start looking at them like that. I mean, there's so many cool designs in here. It's amazing. So top down socks, flap and gusset heels, afterthought heels, uh, toe, and then they have the different versions of the heels also for toe up socks. There's a bunch of stuff, top down socks, knitting socks that fit. There's talk about different, the shapes of feet and stuff like that. So this is like, y'all know me, I love a good resource book. So this is like right on time for me to um, be working on some of these different heels and seeing what works. Okay. So just be on the lookout for when I, you know, start announcing this closer. But if you're someone who likes knitting socks or you're wanting to work on something like that, this is a great resource guide to add to your library. Okay. Sock architecture by Lara Neal. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, Mary Grace is asking, she says, the UPS guy just came. Sorry if you already answered this. I have not. She's asking, have you sheared your sheep since January? So we have not. The, sh the traveling shears that come um, to shear are Florida Cracker Sheep. And actually, let me grab the wool. I haven't showed it in a while. I think my big bag is still here. Maybe not. I think I might have put it back in the other studio. Okay, maybe I don't have it here. Oh, well. Um... 
the um, the traveling shears came for June. They come in January and in June, so they check in with us to see, hey, do your sheep need to be sheared? So I went over there because at, some of you maybe know that we moved Mary, Kate, and Ashley are the sheep, twins. We moved them to the other property that we purchased, and they have a super big fenced up area, bigger than here on our property. I went to check them out, and I tugged on their wool, and it was only about an inch and a half high, so it's not quite long enough for Vicky to be able to process it at her little mini mill. She says she recommends it be at least three inches. I think that's what I recall her saying. So um, we're just going to have them shear them again in January. So one year, shh, January to January. So when they come back on January, they shall get sheared again. And then we'll have more delicious Florida cracker wool to make stuff with. <laughs> How fun. Even if I just spin it and mix it with stuff, I'm happy with that too. But I, I can't wait to actually make something. Probably this winter, you know, once I finish um, spinning up some more bobbins and things like that, I'll do something. Okay. Um, okay, Susan says she'd love to see me do a drum card or Fiber Friday. That would be fun. I won't know what I'm doing, but if you're down for that, Susan, we should have fun together here. All right. Um, so Nova's asking, do you spin your own yarn? Yes. Not all of it. <laughs> but I, this is like one of the bobbins that I've been spinning here. I don't have the hat that I made. Well, I do have it. Luckily, I'm in my own studio where I can just like do, 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 reach over and grab stuff here. I'll grab the hat and then I'll grab the ball of yarn so I can show y'all since we are getting into spinning stuff here. Just to show you an example, I was super, super excited about this because this was my first, first item that I knit or crocheted with my, with yarn that I spun, not homegrown but it's yarn that I spun. I bought a braid of, this is a Polworth silk blend, two braids actually, and I spun it into yarn. I spun this, I made this yarn, ta-da, isn't it pretty? And then I knit this hat, which I also designed. <laughs> this is my Loma worsted hat, and some of you may recall that we did a knit along for this in the fall. We do still have the video course because it has a bunch of video lessons for it. And I think we still have some kits in stock. So you can look for that in our online shop if you're interested. But this is an example of yarn that I spun and something that I made with that yarn that I spun. Isn't that fun? It's like you wear this and you're so proud. You're like, I made the yarn and I made the hat. I made the yarn and I made the hat. At least that's how I walk around. When the shears came, I was like, I, knit, <laughs> I made the yarn and I knit the hat. They came, it was like 30 degrees that day. Remember, it was freezing. So I was like, yay, I get to wear my knit hat when the sheep shears come. We get to be all sheepy together. Um, yeah, we're pretty ridiculous like that. But um, Nova's asking, what machine do I use to spin my yarn? Uh, definitely check out some of the previous episodes of Fiber Friday because I show um, at least the electric Eel Wheel 6.0, which is my e-spinner that I use. But this yarn that I'm spinning with my wool is actually, this bobbin is set up on my Shacked Ladybug, which is a treadle, a wooden treadle spinning wheel. So that's the one that I use. It's like a beginner friendly one. Um, and it's really good. I like it. If you're sitting down on the couch or like you have a comfy spot, that's cool to use. I often will use my electric eel wheel, the EEW 6.0. Um, because I can take it with me. I have a battery pack for it. I can sit it on my lap while my husband's driving on a road trip. It's great. <laughs> and I can't really do that with the treadle wheel. So I have those two that I use for, you know, in different scenarios. Okay. So it looks like y'all want to see more of this stuff of me spinning, turning things into yarn. Again, I'm not no expert, but I'm happy to share like how I do it, at least to show y'all. Cause I know it's even just for educational purposes, it's super fun, right? To see how it all comes together. Like this becomes this, and then two of this becomes this. And then when you knit with this, it becomes this. <laughs> oh, DIYers, makers, we are a special kind of people for sure. But yeah, look at all these goodies I have here that I've made in front of y'all and me. This stuff like this, seeing the colors, seeing the yarn, seeing the projects, seeing the potential projects definitely makes you want to, you know, cast on a whole new project and add to your list of UFOs. All right. Well, thank you, Colette. Colette says, I don't crochet or knit, but I found this interesting to watch. You're so enjoyable to watch and you're so knowledgeable about your crafts. I try to be. I like to learn as much as I can about as much as I can. It's, it's, it's my thing. <laughs> I'm just like, how? But why did that work like that? How did you do that? How did that work? How did they do that? I want to do it too. Um, and you see what I've done in like 
the last seven or eight months. Um, I just started spinning last fall. So it's super cool. And then we got sheep. So now we spin our own wool. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Heather. Yeah, so if you all enjoyed this episode, and I think that's all I have for today. Doop, doop, doop. Make sure that you're on the Fiber Friday newsletter list, and that's where we're going to send out the most information, you know, to keep you in the loop of any new crochet alongs, knit alongs, projects, classes, new episodes, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's where you can stay in the loop, obviously, of everything that's going on with the crafty stuff. If you also sew and quilt, then you'll definitely want to sign up for my regular, like the main email newsletter list, and that one you can jump on just by going to craftygemini.com. And you'll see a little pop-up and just, you can put your first name and your email address and that will add you to there. And that will keep you in the loop of everything going on, Crafty Gemini, Crafty Gemini related. My iPad is falling. All right. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. And remember that if you want to learn how to make that crochet market tote, the link is in the description box below. The 21 video lessons for this project are up. Um, yeah, and then next up we're going to be working on another knit along, then a crochet along, and then another knit along. So we're going to keep cranking out the stuff and come to you maybe with some demos on spinning, drum carding, and making bats, and definitely the circular sock machine because I haven't forgotten about those of you who requested that. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope you have a great uh, rest of your Friday evening, if it's Friday for you still, and that you find some time to do something fun and crafty for yourself this weekend. All right. We will see y'all here on the first Friday of August. Will we be back the first Friday of August? Okay. We will be back on the second Friday of August because we're going on a trip. Um, and I'll be back for that next 11th episode of Fiber Friday. Okay. So I hope to see y'all then. Take care, everybody, and go make something crafty. Bye.